Okay. Um, my name again is Tiffany Murphy and I represent, um, I'm from the Oklahoma Innocence Project. I'm the director and I'm also a professor at o Oklahoma City University School of Law. Um, the project right now is representing Malcolm Scott. Um, a, just go ahead and, and reintroduce yourself. My name is Michael L. Lee Wilson and I'm in Oklahoma State Penitentiary right now. Okay. Um, I wanted to uh, first ask you, um, just kind of set Sure. Um, what's going on? Um, uh, Malcolm Scott is currently serving life without the possibility of parole um, for the um, shooting and homicide um, in Tulsa County, which you wanted to talk about. Yes. Um, why don't you go ahead and, and say whatever it is you want to say, and then if I have any questions. Okay. Okay, no problem. Um, a couple nights before the shooting of Karen Summers, I was shot. Okay, do and you I, remember when that, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt, do you remember? Um, I got shot, I want to say June, I don't know the exact day, but it was sometime in June of 1994, and, okay. and I went to Hillcrest, Hillcrest, and it should be in my records that I shot and had okay. x-rays and everything. Okay. So I went out looking for revenge, and you know, and I, I can't remember. It was over there by the Maybe Center, and I seen a party. And, and of course, you know, it was a gang thing, so I seen the colors that they were wearing, so I went out for revenge. And that's when I wasn't trying to shoot Karen Summers. I was just, she was one of those type of things, you know, and she was in the wrong place at the wrong time. But I shot Karen Summers, Ken Price, and I think, I don't remember his name. I, I want to say his name was Alonzo, but I know it was by his Little Seven. Okay. Now, I had issues with Little Seven while I was in the county jail, too. I called an assault charge on him because I jumped on him while I was in the county jail, too. So Was this was, also in 1994 or was this prior to No, it was the night the shooting was in 94. Then I caught the case that I'm on now. I might have, it shouldn't be in my county jail records that I got an assault charge, I want to say. I want to say maybe 1996. Okay. I called an assault charge against Little Cell. I think his name was Alonzo Johnson, but don't quote me on that. Okay. Okay. Um, can you tell me what was the car that you were driving? I was in a rental car. It was a Ford Taurus. It was like a maroonish color, okay. four door. Okay. Was this your car? It was. It was a rental car. It was a car that. Um, I got into a car wreck. I had a Ford Escort wagon at the time. And I got in, I'm not sure if I got into a car wreck or my brakes or something, but mm -hmm. the Ford company gave me a rental car, and that's what I was driving at the time. Okay. Um, were you the only person in the car? No, I wasn't. Billy Alverson was driving. I was behind him on the, passenger, on the driver's side, and Richard Hardrow was in the back seat on the passenger side. Okay. Um, can you take me back earlier that night? Um, were you working at the time, like d earlier that day? I think it was in September was the shooting. Um, were you working that day? What had been, do you remember what happened earlier that day? Oh, I came up, um, me and Malcolm, I seen Malcolm. Let me see, I seen Malcolm and DeMarco at the Quick Trip. I think it was on the Apache and Harvard Quick Trip. Okay. You know, and I was asking, we were talking, like, what's going on? Like, oh, nothing much. I'm just, I'm out looking for revenge. I'm out to shoot some crabs because that's who shot me. He's like, then, all right, no problem. And he was like, man, you got any extra bullets? So I gave him, a, I had some. I said, I can't give them all to you. So I gave him, like, maybe three or four bullets. I split the clip with him. Okay. So I gave him some bullets later, and I seen them later on. And I, um, after that night, I, when I shot them, I went home and, Later on, um, the police came. Mike Huff, that's a name I'll never forget. Okay. He came to the house wanting to question me. And what's so crazy, I have the gun on me. Okay. So um, they're talking. I'm trying to stash the gun in my room with him. In, but I, So I tried to turn the light off, and I threw the gun back into the room. Well, he seen me do that, so now he has the murder weapon. So they bring me down to the police station, I want to say the 11th Street Police Station, they're asking me all these questions, and like, do you know 
Malcolm Scott, you know, I'm like, yeah, I know Malcolm Scott. Well, he's just, he's been arrested for the murder, of, for murder. I'm like, wow. I was like, um, I didn't know anything. I was like, okay, you know, no big deal. And and I can't think of the, um, the other detective, but it was Mike Huff and another detective. They're asking me all these questions. And I'm nervous because I know they got the murder weapon. I'm like, damn, I'm finna go to jail. But they asked me a few questions. I was like, did you see them? Like, yeah, they asked me for a couple bullets and I gave them to them. No, no big deal. So he was like, well, um, since, since um, they're already arrested, we're gonna, we're gonna check the gun for ballistics and if it don't come back dirty or nothing, you're okay, cause cause they what they wasn't after me, so it kind of blew me away that I got caught with a gun and they just let me go. They didn't arrest me for possession of a firearm or anything. Okay. They just let me go. So to this day, I don't know how my name, I don't know how my name got brought to the police's attention, but all I know is I had a murder weapon on me and they let me go. Um, can I can I back up sure. with you for a second? Um, had you had any prior dealings with Mike Huff? Um, he's just he's just a r robbery homicide detective. Okay. He's just a robbery homicide detective, and the lifestyle that I live, you knew you were aware of. It was him. Then there was a another sheriff named Preacher. Then there was Dunlap. You all knew the cops to look out for, okay. and you and Mike Huff, Detective Huff, was the one that you had to. If you talk to him, it's not good. You want to take a pause right quick? Okay. I'm oh, sure, sure. I just got to do a quick note. No problem. I think I can just sign them and... Do you want him standing over here? Yeah. Do you want him to stand in front of you or... Are you going to sign in front of you? I can sign them right quick. Yeah. You know, right here, and right here, and right here. All right. No, no, no. No, no, no. It's okay. It's all good. Okay. Thanks my ugly signature. I almost all look the same on every one of them. I think this one. <laughs> statement that they said that you made to see if that okay. so if I can dig it out of here. Oh, okay. oh, it no, reaches no. just roll them up and just <laughs> <laughs> okay. there we go. That highlighted section is what's in the probable cause that Corporal me. me. Oh, was that the guy you were talking about? It might have been him. Okay. Yeah, that's where we that good trip on Apache and Harvard. Yeah. Okay. We already capital out of mention. Four or five, yeah. He didn't let him, he did not let him run. Yeah, that's it. Okay. He asked me for some bullets, yeah. Okay, <laughs> cool. Yeah, but no, they, to this, to this day, I mean. Is it back on? Okay. She's gonna, can't even matter. Okay, oh, okay. Hold on, put it on pause for a second. It's still recording, so no matter what. Oh. That's that's kind of better that they yeah, have recorded so they can see everything. Everything's it's, going on. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I still could not believe it that they let me go and didn't arrest me for not possession of a firearm or anything. Did you see uh, a, a weapon on DeMarco when you talked to him or Malcolm Scott when you mm -hmm. talked to him? Nope. They just asked me for some bullets. You know, we're all, like I said, even though we're like, Different gangs, we're still all we're all homies. So okay. he asked me if I would, if they would ask me for anything. I, if I had it, I'd give it to them. If they asked me for, this, this is how we were back then. Okay. It, it's how you know bloods are real tight like that, you know. And like even now, to this day, even though we're having issues, we are still somewhat cool. But I have my set of friends that's on my side. They say, well, shoot. He beat a murder case, what was he supposed to say? And the other was like, man, he's supposed to step up. Like, damn, the police let him go. Mm -hmm. You know, the police let me go, so it's still, it was a faction, but 
it was DeMarco and Malcolm had their clique that was on their side, and I had my partner that was on my side. So it was kind of a, it was kind of rough, but we were all cool together, you know. Okay. But it was kind of like the police let him go. What was he supposed to say? Yeah, I did it, but he's already arrested for murder. So obviously somebody, well, you know, they are, even though they didn't, he did not do it. Okay, so to to the best of your knowledge, in the car that you were in that night, Malcolm and DeMarco were not in that car. He was not with me. I seen him at the quick trip. We kind of bullshit, talked talked about this, talked about that. I think they, I want to say like a white four-door car they left in. Okay. I think they was with some couple females. Don't. I don't remember what females, but they were, no, they weren't with me at all at night. Okay. We left in two different cars. Okay. So you were still driving the Taurus. No, I wasn't driving because my leg was, my leg was kind of sore. Okay. Track star up there. Is that who's up there? That's I know you seen the OU game, right? You know it. That was my last OU game. I was so full of Kool-Aid, smiling. That was my last one. <laughs> and now when OU beat OSU, that was my last one. Me and my Sally, we've been selling for like 10 years. I've been giving him the blues. He got like maybe one win since we were Sally's. So I, got, I loved it, that one. <laughs> he was salty. But I didn't even, man, I didn't even hoorah him about it. He was not a happy camper at all. Well, he was rooting for the Tide? No, no. He's Oklahoma State fan. Oh, let's see. Oh, no, no. He, he, I was hoping OSU on. I'm going to know what I was rooting for him, too, because that was the Big 12. <laughs> Thank you, Miss Allen. See you later. All right. <laughs> Thank What's the muscle with it all that working out? <laughs> you see, game? Hey, oh, you got to lock me in. You got to lock me in. I have to pull it? Yeah. There you go. Yeah, you got to lock <laughs> me in. That, that come get me. <laughs> Good night. All right. Um, so, uh, who was driving that? Who drove you to the quick trip? Billy Alverson was driving. Okay. He loved to drive, so he always wanted to drive. <laughs> okay. Um, so, Billy picked you up from... No, no, no. It was my car. Okay. I picked him up from, I want to say, his house. Um, I want to say it's like 28th and Harvard. I don't know if you're not from Tulsa. There's like this maybe center, mm -hmm. and this is it's, that's where he used to stay. It, it belonged to my great grandfather and grandmother. Mm -hmm. He was taking care of the house at the time. So I want to say 28th and like North Hartford, okay. over there by Vernon Mount Apartments, kind of in that area. Okay, okay. And that's where he and I picked him up because mm -hmm. Harjo was with us. Harjo was his common-law wife, baby mom, whatever you want to call her. That was her little brother. Okay. And he always wanted to come with us. So he was with us too. So I, I came to pick them up and Russ, you know, my leg was kind of hurt. It was hurting at the time. So he's like, man, you want to drive? I'm like, yeah, you can drive, man. So he was the drive. He was driving that night. We were just driving around, bullshitting and stuff. And I was, you know, I was out looking for revenge, mm -hmm. you know. So that's the main thing that was it about. What was the, the gun that you have? Do you remember what? kind of gun it was? It's a 380 um, semi-automatic, all black. It was called, um, what an expensive gun. It was Lorsen gun. That's, I had a lot of those because they were like 
sixty bucks back then. Oh, okay. Yeah, so I had a lot okay. of those. Um, did uh, in your uh, later on you were charged with this as um, originally you were charged with this when they picked you up? No, when they first picked me up, they was just brought me in for questioning. Oh, okay. Then I didn't get picked up for like seven weeks. So after they did ballistics tests, I didn't get picked up then. Even when I got picked up for it, um, okay, I was going to pick my girlfriend up, my baby mama at the time. I picked her up from, she stayed over there off of by Chamberlain. I picked her up and I was at my, I went to my grandmother's house. And this, they called. Somebody called and like, Mr. Wilson, Michael Wilson, are you there? I'm like, yeah, this is me. Then they hung up. Okay. <laughs> they hung up. I'm like, no big deal. Then all of a sudden, my mom and my grandmother was, grandpa was like, hey, there's all kind of police everywhere. I'm like, so they called back, well, we need you to, we have the police out here. Don't try to run. The house is surrounded. Would you please come out with your hands up? So I had on, I changed into some jeans and t-shirt. You know, I already had a, a lawyer that was going to represent me for this. Okay. So, okay, they came and arrested me, took me down to that same police station on Lemon Street. And there, that, uh, that detective was like, listen, Mr. Wilson, we're going to charge you with, uh, excuse me, first degree murder, two counts of shooting with intent. Do you remember which detective it was? Was it the same one? It wasn't, was it wasn't Huff. It was the same one that let me go the first time. Was that Meeks or was it? Someone? It might have been Meeks. Okay. It might have been Meeks. He the one that let me go the first time. Okay. So it's like, listen, Wilson, we don't think you're the shooter. We don't think you did the shoot. We don't. We think you might have been involved. We might have been in the car, but you're not the shooter. But you want to talk to us? I'm like, I don't have anything to say. I have an attorney present. So of course, you know, they did the cop thing where they just let me stay there for a while and waited and waited and waited. Then they took me to the county jail. My lawyer at the time, um, Bob Payton, he was, in, and they was telling him like, they still not, they don't think you did it. He knew I did it. They, they don't think you did it. They don't think you did it. I'm like, so what I'm gonna do about this? He's like, well, they offering you a deal of accessory after the fact. That's going to give you a five-year PS. That's going to give you five years, either five years on paper, suspended, or five years in. They're going to have to do something called the PSI on you, and they're going to give you a bond. I'm like, give me a bond? Like, all this time, while I was waiting on the ballistics, I didn't run. I work every day and all that stuff because the cops told me they're not after me. So I'm like, okay, no problem. So um, I go... I'm in jail seven weeks. I cross paths with Malcolm. I cross paths with DeMarco. I cross paths with all the homies. Like, man, what's going on? What you doing in here? From, they saying that you the one that did the murder. I'm like, man, I'm in here for murder. I ain't did the horse. You know, I didn't talk to nobody because they was everybody's quizzing me about like, man, I'm in here for murder. That's all I know. I don't know why I'm in here. Then come, I was in there for like a month. I was supposed to go to preliminary hearing. I went to preliminary hearing. It got passed. It got passed again. Then the third time I went, um, I was in front of Judge Dalton, and they the deal was worked out that I was gonna get out. For uh, they dropped much murder charges to accessory after fact, and pretty much I told them that um, I didn't. All I had to do was ask the question, yes or no. Did I give some bullets to Malcolm? I mean to Marco Carpenter? I said yes. Then um. Then they think they asked me about a gun. I'm not really, they asked me, um, did, um, I said, um, DeMarco Carpenter gave me a gun to hold. And that was it. <laughs> that was it. They said, okay. Gave me a $5,000 bond. I didn't go back upstairs. I stayed on the third floor and I bonded out. Did DeMarco give you a gun? No. He didn't give me a gun. He asked me, did DeMarco Carpenter give you a gun? I said, yes. That's what I had to say. And that's, <laughs> They let me out, and to this day, and they was like, everybody was like, man, what are you doing out? I'm like, man, they dropped my case to accessory after the fact. Like, and all that time, I never got on the stand. Never got on the stand against them. I never said that, hey, they were the shooters. Right. None of that. Okay. Like, but I'll you testified at their trial. No, I didn't. I got, um, 
I got a contempt of court. I got a contempt of court charge at okay. the trial. I got a contempt of court because I didn't answer any questions. The only thing I said was, I don't recall. I don't recall. I don't recall. Okay. Yeah, so that's what I said. So I got a contempt of court charge for that because I like, I think I said, listen, I'm facing a death penalty. I have nothing to say because I was in the county jail okay. when they went to trial. Okay. So I was in the county jail with the guys. At one time, I was even in a cell with um, Malcolm Scott. We was in D, that cell D18 together for about a couple months together. Okay. Um, you mentioned a little while ago that your attorney knew that you had committed the the drive by. Mm -hmm. um, did you tell him that, or yeah. did he? Okay. He knew. He All was right. my attorney, attorney client privilege, and everything right. like that. He knew. Okay. Um, to the best of your recollection, when you were questioned by the detectives with the Tulsa Police Department, um, they suggested to you that Malcolm and DeMarco committed the homicide. Yep, yep, because other people already were testifying, saying that it was them. Okay. It was them, that's how he got arrested. I think that's how, I think that's how Malcolm got arrested because somebody, one of those witnesses, like they recanted now, said it was him. Okay. And I don't, to this day, me, like me and Malcolm don't look anything alike. I've seen Malcolm. I would, I would understand that. Yeah, yes, we, we were young. He was mm -hmm. dark skinned. I'm light. Well, I'm a little bit dark. I'm a little bit pale. So I don't get that much sun anymore. But yeah, we don't look anything alike. I don't. I didn't wear glasses back then, though. Okay. But we don't look anything alike. I don't look like um, Demarco. Demarco. Demarco's tall. Well, we were. He he grew later. Oh, okay. He grew later. He was. We was about the same height. Okay. He grew later. He was. Because now and I think he's like six two, six three. I mean, yeah. he's really up there. Yeah, he's tall and big. He was yeah. he was skinny when I knew him. Okay. When I knew him, so yes, we might have had the same, but yes. Till this day, it's still been um, for well, preliminary hearing when I was out on bond. I was a witness, so I had to show up to testify. I didn't have to testify then. They just had me on the witness list, which it caused a little grief, but. If you can check, I never said that Malcolm Scott was a shooter. Not one time I never said that. Not one time have I said DeMarco Carpenter was a shooter. All I had, they let me go, was I had to give some bullets to DeMarco, and DeMarco gave me a gun. That's it. That's all I've said. I've never testified. I've never said that he was a shooter. Never. Not one time. And then, but like with this, then I called this murder case I'm on. Mm -hmm. I had to go back to the county jail. You know, I caught some grief. I got a couple fights. And I got into a fight with a couple of, the, um, let me see, a couple of homies jumped me once. I got jumped once, got into, I got jumped once, and I got into two one-on-one -on -one fights over this mm -hmm. because they knew, they was like, I guess they were saying that, man, them guys in, they saying they didn't do it. They saying that you did it. I'm like, man, I'm going through this right now. Like, won't you step up and say something? Like, listen, I'm I'm on this case. I'm going. They trying to give me the death penalty, and I have fall partners too. Right. So I never said nothing, but then later on, like a couple of times, you know, I told him, like, man, I told him, like, if I ever get to the point where I get off of this case or where there's no hope for me, there's nothing. I'll make sure I'm gonna write a letter. I wrote one before. Okay. I wrote like 2005, seven somewhere in there. I wrote one before, and I even, what was so crazy, when I first got the death penalty back in 97, I wrote a letter, but Malcolm told me that he never got it. He never got it, because you know, it was one of those type of things, I gave it to, to one of the homies to give it to him, but he never got it. It was one of those, it might've got lost, it might've got flushed, or they might've found it in shake down, whatever. Okay. But he never got it, but I did write a letter like in 2005 or something. Then once I got turned down on this, we contacted each other, and I told him what I was going through. I was like, hey, I ain't got no problem with it. He gave me the lawyer's name, and I, as you know, I wrote the affidavit. I wrote, I wrote a letter, then I got the affidavit, and now I'm talking to y'all. Okay. Can I ask you, what happened after after the drive-by? Where did you and Billy and Richard go? Just kept on hanging out. Kept on hanging out, then later on we found out it was on the news or something. Okay. Um, what did you do? You kept the gun on you the entire time? Yes. Yes, I did. 
Okay. Um, and then that was the gun that Michael Huff found on you when he came to your house. Yes. Um, during Michael Huff's testimony in Malcolm and DeMarco's trial, he said that the reason he was at your house is because he needed to talk to you about some unrelated matters. Do you have any idea what that means? I think that's police talk. Somebody mentioned my name. Okay. That's police, because I wasn't, at that time, you know, I was in gang life, but, but no, nah, that was the first time. I knew of him, but no, nah, that's police talk that somebody said that somebody mentioned my name. Okay. Somebody mentioned my name. Okay. I was just wondering because <laughs> it, it's there. He said, I was at, I went to see Michael, because that's why it, to me, was bizarre when I'm reading their transcript, and he just shows up at your house a day or two later exactly with no other preamble and no one asks him the question what is an unrelated matter and he just says i was there on an unrelated matter and then i asked to talk to to you and went in the house so that was somebody that's that's code for somebody mentioned my name that's the way they get it because they can say um you asked so what's the unrelated matter well it's an ongoing investigation it's okay. you lawyer, it's lawyer talking, that's cop talk for somebody talking. <laughs> okay. Um, do you remember how many times you were questioned in relation to this shooting? Twice. Okay, and that was? The first time when they found the gun on me. Okay. Then the second time when they arrested me for it. And they didn't talk to you? No one, law enforcement, police, prosecutor, anybody? Nope talk to you in between that period of time? No, no okay. one talked to me. Because like I said, they found the gun on me. They let me go. They let me go. Okay. <laughs> okay. They let me go. <laughs> uh, I struggle with that one, but okay. Um, uh, That's one of those things you can look up in the records. They, they found the gun on me for unrelated matters. They found the gun on me. Okay. Didn't charge me with nothing. Let me go. And I went to work. Every day, mm -hmm. drove around. Every you know, every once in a while, I would get nervous when I see the police coming up to my job. Okay. But no, nothing. Let me go. They let me go, and then eventually I got arrested when they when the ballistics came back with the gun. Okay. Um, I wanted to ask you if you knew one person. Sure. Because and of course right now I'm missing the name. Um, what is that woman's name? Ernestine Truwell. That name doesn't ring any bells. You don't know who that is? Okay. All right. Who is that? She apparently worked with the Tulsa Sheriff's Department, and she was at the party that night, and she was with the gang task force and was at the party prior to the shooting, and she was explaining, um, and she testified after you did at Malcolm and DeMarco's trial about gang life or whatever mm -hmm. and so I was just wondering if you knew her because we have not seen no, I haven't anything even, from her. I haven't I don't even know who that is. Okay. Okay. Um I'm trying to think if there's anything else. Um Billy Alverson did Billy Alverson talk to you about communicating with DeMarco and Malcolm? No, about um, the case. No, we never. I mean, that was he's my family. Yes, I, I'm aware. We, we never. I mean, it was one of those type of things. We it was one of those things we didn't talk about it's because you don't because you never know who was listening. Okay. It was one of those unspoken things. We knew what was going on, but we never spoke on and everything like that. But later on, when we were down here a long time, I told him, I'm, you know, I'm gonna make this right. I'm gonna make this right with me. I gotta. I can't have this. Um, I'm like I said. I'm not that same guy I was when I was that age. So I'm a different person. I'm 38 years old now, and you know, and I'm I'm trying to live right by Christ and everything. And I can't have this this on my head. I'm like, man, how come you didn't make it right? You know, because that's what he's gonna ask me. So I know it's kind of late in the fact, but I want to make sure I make this right. I just hope people believe me. You know, because it's gonna be kind of hard to believe me. So that's why I wanted to talk to y'all. Plus, even. In my final statement, when I go up there, I'm going to mention this, too. Because I, I don't, what I look like, I'm about to die, and I'm going to have a lie on my voice. Because that's going to probably be one of the first things I'm going to say is, DeMarco Carpenter and Malcolm Scott is innocent. They didn't do this crime. They, they, not, they don't belong in jail. That's going to probably be one of the first things I'm going to say, because I don't want this. I want to make sure I'm 
I'm straight, and I don't want this on them. Okay. Um, and I just now realized I probably should have gotten something sooner. Um, you said that your attorney at trial, you told your attorney at trial that you committed this. No, 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 no. I told him, you know, those his attorney client. Right, meeting. no, no. But I, what I'm what I'm asking is, I could potentially get an affidavit from your counsel at the time that he did that you did make the statement to him. That I was the one that did it. Yeah. Yes. His name is Bob Payton. I want to say his office is like fifth in Cincinnati, right across the street from the old Tulsa County Jail. It was like on a a red brick road. Robert Payton. P-E-Y-D-E-N or P-A-Y-T-O-N. Okay. Do you, I'm going to show him this video. No problem. Do you authorize him to talk to me about your case at the time where he represented you on the accessory? Yes. Bob, go ahead and tell him that I told you. Is that good enough? I, I think, do you, I'm trying to think if there's anything else. Could you go ahead and say that in a formal statement? Oh, you, my name is Michael L. Lee Wilson. At the time of the char accessory after the fact, Bob Payton was my attorney, and I am releasing him from attorney-client privilege to talk to, what's your name? Tiffany Murphy from the Oklahoma Innocence Project. Tiffany Murphy from the Oklahoma Innocence Project. Innocence Project. <laughs> it's a mouthful, but yes. I want you to talk to her to make sure we can get this right. If he has any files or anything about the conversations, is it all right if I get those or talk to him about those? Also, if you have any files still related to this, you are allowed to give them to Tiffany Murphy. You are away from any ethic violations. That's. I think that's fine. You are away from any ethics violations. Okay. All right, and I will, just so for full disclosure, I will be using them for Malcolm DeMarco's case. Mm -mm. P-A-Y. I can't spell. P-A-Y-T-O-N, like yeah. Walter Payton. Yeah, or P-A-Y-D-E-N, something like that. But his office is like, it was on like a red brick street right across from the Tulsa County Jail. I know, like, okay. Yeah, I'll find it. I can look him up in the bar. Okay. General, that's fine. Um, but I will be using this solely for the purpose of Malcolm and DeMarco's cases. No problem. Um, and just to confirm, because what I'm going to probably need to do is uh, corroborate what you're saying today no um, with that. So um, I just wanted to let you know what we would be using that information for. Also, you can, if you show this, I think Harjo already wrote something, right? That is true. He did write us a statement okay. and was willing to sign an affidavit. Okay. For it. Plus, if you show him that, it'll make him more probably more, even more comfortable of saying something. Okay. Um, do you have anything else you would like to say, explaining anything? Yeah, I don't know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It's just kind of, I mean, I just want to make sure I get this, they know this, that they let me go. I mean, I, I, they let me go. I mean, that's the only thing I can, to this day, they let me go. And it was, I, feel, I mean, I felt bad about it, but they let me go, you know. So I'm sorry for taking all the year, those years away from them. You know, so I hope they get out and do right. Do right. This, okay. this is out when they're being here. So I hope they do right. Okay. Um, I want to thank you for your time. And no problem. thank you for being willing to talk to me today. No problem. No problem whatsoever. I just wanted to make sure they knew because I told them I was going to do it. You know, it's one of those things like, man, is he really going to do it? Now he knows that I did it. I, well, Malcolm called yesterday, and I told him that I would be talking to you today. So he said, let me know. I said, I will do that. All right. So. Well, if you want to make I don't know if he still goes by, just tell him, call him Dirty Mac or something. <laughs> I will do that. Call will him do Dirty that. Mac. Tell Dirty Mac I said, what's up, and I hope this helps him. Okay. All right, thank you. No problem. That's it.